Let me introduce you to my Warco drill press. But could it be improved? Whoa, 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 whoa. We haven't got time for that. We need to sort this PC out. Thank you to everyone who responded to my last video and pointed out that I'd installed both the fan incorrectly and uh, I'd got the CPU cooler 180 degrees. Um, I think as I explained in the comments, I just basically just put it back exactly as I built it about 10 years ago. Well, I was thinking actually it might be a bit more than that. But anyway, a long time ago, I was really just trying to get it done before my wife came back, so I'd had that lapping complete. Uh, I didn't really pay much attention to it, so I just put it back exactly as I built it. But clearly, yeah, we've got those two errors to fix, and then I think it'll run a lot cooler. Uh, I am going to stick with this PC. I mean, it's a really old PC, but it works. It's worked for 10 years. It just got a little bit warm, so I'm going to sort that out. So I don't think I'm going to change it or swap it out for anything at the moment, unless something bad happens. And um, yeah, I, th I think I've got a great audience on this channel. Thank you very much for your kind words, and uh, let's get on with it. So first thing we're going to do is just remove the fan because it's uh, pulling the air this way rather than blowing into the unit. I did actually have a think at the time, um, I noticed it was it was sucking air rather than blowing and I wondered actually, did it make much difference? So I've had a quick read around online and it could be worth a couple of degrees if you uh, pull the air this way rather than blow. So we'll swap it round, every degree helps. So I just need to unplug it from the motherboard. Now it's a bit awkward because it's buried. There we go. Now I'll just remove the heat sink, so it's just held on by that clip, and they're pretty easy to remove. Hang on, I think there's an easier way. Okay, now last time I got a screwdriver down, got the clips there that hold it onto the sockets on the motherboard, and one of the comments was you can just press on this. Oh, that might. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was easy. Thank you for that comment. That should come off nicely now. And let's just clip to the back. There we go. Let's see what we got underneath. Alright, so based on all the comments and just having a bit of a think about it and um, using some logic there, yeah, you can see. If we can hold it up there. Because there's this cutout, so thank you for pointing that out, it looks obvious now I'm looking at it. Uh, that cutout there should go where that socket 462, that raised piece. And I had it the other way around, which kind of meant it was it was tilted this way, and I think you can see on there it was not making contact at the back because it was basically at an angle. So I'll wipe this off, I'll turn it around and make sure that that relief there is in line with that. Uh, yeah, you can see actually on the chip itself, there's loads of grease on there. So maybe it would have worked, maybe it would have got on the warm side, we'll see. Um, let's clean that off and uh, yeah, get that mounted correctly. Uh, actually, while we're here, we'll just give you a close-up of the chip. So yeah, I think a number of you spotted it. it was an Athlon chip, which I've had for years. It was uh, well, it's doing good service. And then uh, I believe those are the little surface mount capacitors around the outside there. And one of the comments was, um, be careful using this grease because it's electrically conductive and if it gets onto those capacitors uh, they won't like it and that might be the end of it. So I thought I'd do a little test. So I guess it makes sense because I think these have got little um, metal particles in or something like that. Let's have a look what it says on there, on the grease. Does it say what's in it? Thermal grease, thermal conductivity, Thermal resistance. No, it doesn't say. I'm assuming there's some kind of metalized particles in there. So, uh, I don't know. Can we test the resistance? Let's have a go. So, we've got it set in resistance mode. Um, well, we'll try the, try the most sensitive one there. 200. Only if I touch the touch them together, but through the paste. And then try a different range. I 
again just if I touch them together under the paste. No, alright, oop, 20 mega ohms. If I touch them together, just about. Mm. Not really. I don't know, does that mean it's not really electrical, electrically conductive? Because one of the comments warned me about using this because uh, it can be electrically conductive and then if it gets on those capacitors, could be game over for the CPU. Well, I've only got this paste. I haven't got the other one that that commenter mentioned, so uh, I'm going to be brave and put that back on. Tiny, tiny amount. Push it down and hopefully that will be the last of it and we can get on with some machining. All right, let's, let's, uh, let's clean it up and get that mounted. Okay, here we go. So that's it, finally installed. Found the other way around this time. Now, I've been running for a long time without the case on. I think I'll still do that. There's nothing lost there. Uh, I've got that desk fan just there, just in case I need to bring some of the hot air out if it's a really hot day, because it kind of gets a bit trapped behind the back there. All right, let's turn it on and see if it works. promising isn't it? That's a lot lower than last time. I think last time we were maybe 18, 20 degrees there and we were up in the low 50s. Yeah it just goes to show what happens if you put your um, cooler on the right way around. Thank you to all those who commented. I think that was well worth getting that right wasn't it? Okay, in the last video we got the knee mounted, we got it all machined up and then mounted up and it all looks really nice, looks like it's going to work. Uh, so what we need to do next is the brake assembly, just finish that off. We made some of it in, the, in an earlier video, but we just need to machine the front face down and then make the T-nut so we can lock it off. Then we can use it for drilling uh, and also it'll uh, lock it off uh, to stop it back driving due to the weight of the XY table. So let me show you what we've got. So here's the bit of box section we machined in an earlier video and that's got to go down the back there and it bolts onto this back plate and then in the plate that's behind here that goes up and down on the knee there's a hole for this uh, sort of locking bristol clamp, sort of indexable clamp to go through and it will go through there and then inside there will be a T-nut that slides up and down and basically grips it onto that surface there so that's the plan but this is 30 by 30 and the distance between here and there was dictated by these bearings which is just a shade under 30 millimeters so i just need to take just a tiny amount off i think in cad it's a quarter of a millimeter but um, we'll put it on the cnc machine take nearly that and just see how it fits and just creep up on it because i want it to be a reasonable fit because this has got to kind of make a kind of clamp uh, joint there and flex a little bit right so let's go and set that up on the machine and take a little bit off Okay, so we're getting ready to machine down this, this box section, this part of the brake system. So we've got to take, I'll just check the drawing. So it's nominally 30 by 30 box section. And just to get it to be a nice uh, sort of running fit, we need to take uh, 0.25 millimeters off there to bring it down to 29.75. So what we'll do, we'll touch off the part. We'll take 0.2 off it, just off a little bit at the bottom there. Take it off, try it out, see what that's like. If that's pretty good, yeah, then we'll just run it all at 0.2. If it feels like, yeah, it just needs that extra 0.0 to uh, 0.05, then we'll bring it back, touch it off again. Well, it should be should set itself up in about the same position, and then we'll just take that last bit off. Now, I know you shouldn't move parts for um, ultimate accuracy, but we're just trying to get it somewhere close. I don't think it's super critical, but I'd rather 
just underplay it, offer it up and just see where that gets us to uh, rather than go for the full amount and then find it's a little bit looser than I wanted. So I'll touch off and then we'll skim that down. And here it is. Um, because it's only supported at the ends and this is an open section, it did chatter a little bit along there and it's left a bit of a witness, but I've just sanded it back slightly and yeah, it's kind of what it is. It's going to get uh, running anyway as it's used for braking and so on, so let's see if it fits. So hopefully it'll just... a bit tight there. So. Do you know what? I think I'm going to go with that. Then we'll get a nice clamp onto there. Right, let's uh, miss the hole. Here we go. could get a DTI and run that down the side and get that pretty lined up but I think all I'll do I'll when I make the Tina I'll put that in run it up and down a few times that's slightly loose make sure it runs okay and then you know that's kind of it really isn't it it's not like a linear bearing or anything all right let's just check it runs up and down now Time to make the tea nuts. Now you can buy tea nuts, you know, off the shelf, but I just wanted something that was a really good fit in that slot and just custom made. And then I want to put some radiuses on the end. And uh, so I just decided to make my own. So I've done a quick sketch here. So it'll be based on a, a round. I'll show you that in the lathe in a minute. And we'll bring that to final size. Drill and tap for M8 at the center. And then we'll take it to the CNC machine and we'll just manually. Uh, clean off these sides so we've got two straight pieces and then that's a little rebate there so you can see that in the side view just to turn it into kind of a T basically you got all some rough dimensions nothing too critical yeah I've gone for a pretty close fit if I can get a nice running fit on that but you know as long as I'm a little bit under that will still be fine so let's skim the face and get the hole in okay to get that square in there that piece of stock I've just pushed it up against the nose of the chuck and just spun it round lightly and then tighten it up just so it's going to be pretty close. I think it'll be good enough for what we want. So, yeah, let's get a tool in and skim the face. Drill and tap a hole. Um, 
No. 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 Finally. Okay, we've got it set up in the vise now. I've got it pretty level with that line there by eye. It's not super critical, but got it pretty close. Uh, this is a router. It's not really a milling machine, so it's gonna run a little bit fast. We'll put some cutting oil on. Hopefully we can take that excess off and then we machine the step in it and then turn it around 180, rest it on that flat we've machined on these parallels and then put the step in the other side. And that should be it. So let's see how we get on. I wondered if it might do that because I've only got a little bit of a bite on it. We'll see if we can lower it down a little bit and uh, we'll get ourselves a new cutter. It was actually cutting okay up to that point, so I'll obviously machine it, just got to grab a better hold of it. Okay, and after a little clean up, here it is. So let's see if it fits in the slot. That's a pretty close fit. I'll try not to drop it. <laughs> Snug. Go up and down. Uh, let's just okay. All right. Yeah, it's a bit tight. I'll just dress off these sides slightly just to make it a little bit of a better fit. 
We'll also put a very slight radius around each of these corners here because what I don't want it to do is when it's going up and down, try and pull to one side and then dig in like a kind of break. So we'll just make sure there's a gentle radius on there. And then we'll uh, bring you back in a minute and we'll try it in the proper place and see if it'll lock it up. All right, I've given it a little bit of a clean up, just taking the burr off these edges and rounded them over slightly. And right. How am I going to do this? In there somewhere. Got it. All right. Okay, so with it with it locked. Yeah, that does not want to move. I don't want to force it, but yeah, that's not moving. And then unlocked. And it moves fine, then lock it off. Let's get it in position. Lock it off. How, much, how many turns does it need? Yeah, locked. Unlocked. Locked. Unlocked. Locked. Yeah, about a quarter of a turn is enough. Let's see, yeah, from there. Quarter turn, and it's locked. Yeah, I like that. Alright, so the difference between. So that's locked now, and then that's unlocked. Locked. Unlocked. Good. Break finished. Now you might remember a few videos ago I had a problem with the clamp that goes around the back of the machine that um, clamps some of the main units onto the, the main column and there was a foul on that left side there so where the uh, the reed head the digital readout moved up and down it's got the kind of covered shield that comes out the bottom for the cable and it was just hitting on here so I'm just going to take it roughly down to that line there just clean that up just give some clearance and then manually we'll just give a little bit of a radius around there and uh, then it should go back on and that'll be another problem solved right let's get going Okay, and here it is. So I've just given a, a hand radius around there and just taken basically all the sharp edges off. So when the cable comes down, if it does get near there, I don't think it will, but if it does, it should just push it out of the way and uh, should clear now. So it's a bit awkward film around there, so I'll just get it in place and then bring you around. Okay, so hopefully you can just about see. 
I can't see what I'm doing now because the camera's in the way. So I have to look through the screen to see where, where I am. Okay, let's get this tightened up. Okay. Right. I think I can just about get in around the camera. So uh, the knee is at, at the lowest point it can be. So this bracket that's on the back of the knee, the ball nut, um, is as low as it can be. So if we just move this down, not, it's not fully adjusted in and out and everything, but that's as low as it will go. And you can see it's just, I think it's just moving past. Otherwise, yeah, so I'll go to there. If we have it up on a bracket or a tie like that, yeah, I think we'll go with that. That looks all right. Now, before I go too much further, everything was just kind of temporarily fixed on here. I just sort of roughly lined it up as best I could, and I thought before I get the um, the DRO scale mounted up and lined up. That's got to be lined up with the ball nut and the ball nut's all got to be lined up with the rails and everything's got to be lined up with the axis of the machine. So I thought really I need to start from the front and then work backwards, get the rails sorted out. I might need to, uh, remember I've got those adjustment screws, I've got these um, countersinks here, these countersink screws holding it on, but there's five millimeter grub screws either side and they were all the way down. So that would allow me to bring the plate in or out or turn it that way, but I think the in and out was the critical one. Uh, none of those are in, basically it's just tightened up against the the steel at the back. Um, so I thought before I go too much further, let's just see how good it is with it just sort of thrown on there really, or lined up as best I can uh, before I get carried away. Uh, now there is some run out in this quill, or the quill in the chuck, sorry. Um, when I first got it, it was about 0.05 when you had a piece about here. It's, it's more than that now, so I don't know if it needs a good clean out. I haven't cleaned it in all the years I've owned it. It might be I have to get a much better quality uh, chuck because uh, I remember the or the arbor itself was very very good. I do measure the run out there; it was pretty low, pretty close to zero. Uh, so for now, I've just put it in the centre of the run out because all we want to do is just move the indicator up and down here and see if this is moving at least in this plane, um, in the same plane as this. And then we'll turn this ninety degrees and see how it's doing this way, and then uh, see what we've got. Now I did just do a trial run, and it was really rather good. So I promise you, I haven't fix this I haven't rigged anything um, yeah let me show you what we've got so I've got it zeroed out here and we're just going to run up and down the side of this uh, precision ground bar here and honestly I have clocked that at zero look it is spring loaded against that and up we go yeah I couldn't believe it either when I got to that point I keep going does start to drift there. But I'd said to myself, if we're within 0.05, I was going to leave it because, you know, this is not a jig boring machine. It's not going to be a milling machine. It is still a drill press with some added convenience features. So I think for what we're doing, that's probably good enough because you know the amount of movement you're going to have between doing a you know a counter bore or putting a small drill in there and then putting a much larger one in, moving the work out of the way, and staying you know, you know, within 0 0.03, point oh yeah about point oh three, I think we'll go with that. So um, I'll just tighten everything up, and that's good in that axis. Right, let's just check the other way. Well, I should have mentioned in that last shot, I'd also moved it around just to find the high to make sure we weren't going off at a funny angle or just getting lucky on it. Um, so again, we've just found the high on there and have zeroed it. And we're going to measure sort of uh, how good it runs in this plane. So, got that zeroed. Um, actually, I can't wind it and see the needle. Oh, just about. Uh, it's more this way. 
Not much though. Again, within about 0.04. So it's, it's slightly moving this way, not a lot, just a bit. See if it changes when I lock it, so that's, that's locked. Yeah, just about half half a segment so again pretty good so which way yeah if I lift the tape already uh, uh. so it's it's down like this which will mean shimming at the bottom a little bit because I can't go in anymore at the top to be honest is it worth dismantling it and chasing that last little bit I think for what we got here probably not well, I think that's it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. Um, that's some good steady progress there. So we've got... Um, what did we do? <laughs> I can't remember. Ah, yes. Okay, I think we'll call it there. Some pretty good progress overall. We've got the brake system installed, so in principle now we can we can drill some holes. And then we made the um, T-nut that goes on the back of there. Um, then we machined some clearance for that clamp, so that should give me clearance for the DRO reed head. Um, actually I think we can put that one on now because now we know it's all pretty well aligned we'll get that lined up in the next video uh, we need to make a piece that goes on here I, I was just checking my stock whether I had a piece I might have to order some for that okay as always yeah, great to hear your comments thumbs up if you like it all that kind of stuff and we'll see you next time